I dare say. Okay, God's chosen fast. I will tell you this, it's not only a scripture, but it's a book. I read it probably 40, 50 years ago. Don't know a thing about it anymore, other than it's from 58th chapter of Isaiah, basically. And that's the title. So when I heard him talk to me about the topic for today, I wondered, where are we going to go? I'll tell you where we're not going to go in part. We're not going to go to how, what, how you do, what you do, because I think it's different probably for most of us. A guy I, I traveled with much, seen many supernatural happenings with him. He told me one day, he says, when I fast, he says, I can't drink a cup of coffee. It's like I sat down to dinner. I told him. I didn't tell him that when I fast, I don't only drink coffee, I might throw in a cup of hot chocolate every now and again. He said, hello, we're all different. So that's not what I want to talk about. I want to just come to a place of recognition that, and maybe we'll start with this statement. Our fasting does not change God. Fasting changes us. What do we need to change? Sasha's going to put up a scripture that you don't have if you want to update your notes. He's going to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. And it appears to be a bit of a contest here. Okay? This I say then, I recommend... Actually, I want you to do this. Walk in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. Is that what it says? And the Spirit lusts against the flesh. They're contrary. Contrary. Opposites. Adversaries, so to speak. So the, from one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. Well, how about that? Wow. Hmm. So if fasting does not change God, fasting changes us. We cannot twist the Lord's arm to get our desires by fasting, what is happening to us on the inside? What is happening to us? Well, on the, in the New Covenant, all divine provisions are already placed into the heavenly account. Faith draws from the treasury of divine provisions. Fellowship with the Godhead is, is enhanced when our spirit joined with the Lord is one spirit and one in control. What we're looking at here is Man is a three-part being. If you want to put in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, you could do that. I would that you'd be sanctified holy, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who will also do it. All right? Now, it takes a supernatural happening to be holy, sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is new, completely new at the rebirth. Or at the birth, we become new creations, created in Christ Jesus. We've been here multiple times. This body, Romans 12, 2 says, let it be a, a living sacrifice. Present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or your spiritual service. Goes on to verse 2 and tells us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. How would you like to know the perfect will of God? How do you like to know the good? The acceptable. Mm. It will, we will have to focus on him and what he has 
in store for us. But let's, let's pause a moment because let's deal with this body. Greek word is soma, containing the voice, <laughs> containing the voice of the five senses. Do you realize that every one of your senses has a voice? What you see speaks. What you hear, what you taste, what you smell, what you touch. And we sacrifice that. Much to my surprise, you have, you have watched me sh have um, a degree of difficulty with certain words. When I sat down to do this, he's, all these things, these five senses, he said, are to be subjugated to the spirit. I said, what? So to speak. I, can't, I don't even know if I can say that word properly. Is that, was I close? I was close. Okay. Subjugated. Oh, well. Okay. So we've already covered Romans 12, 1. Hebrews 5, 14 says this, that we are to have our senses exercised to discern good and evil. Does our senses recognize good and evil? They're also involved in all of this is our soul, our psyche, our mind, our intellect, will, and emotions is also subjugated to the spirit. Mm. Now, our soul here is ever in an ever-changing state of renewal. We've already seen it on the board, Romans 12, 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, to this word subjugated, I went to the dictionary. Miriam Webster says, bring under control, subdue, conquer. Okay, I understand that. But as I was on the internet, I just dropped down to the free dictionary and just took a look at that. And you know the word that jumped out? Dominion. My spirit is to have dominion over this and this. Dominion. So now we have these fundamentals in here. Now let's enter into the subject of fasting, which, what does it do? It enhances our fellowship, aiding our confidence by the removal or the subjection of contrary negatives. Well, there's a fancy term. You wonder if it's Lynn standing up here, don't you? Uh, <laughs> well, it'll become evident. In Isaiah 58, verse 5, uh, the scripture says, Isaiah says, or as the Lord would say, is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict or to humble, uh, humble himself, chasten his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? Is it to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast? An acceptable day of the Lord. The outward show of self-denial is not a chosen fast his chosen fast. The question asked is, is this the fast that I have chosen? It's followed by an answer. Verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen or approved? One, to loose the bands of wickedness or to free from the bands or the chains of wickedness, iniquity and oppression. You want to be free? You want others to be free. To undo, untie the heavy burdens or loose from unrighteousness, injustice, and being exploited. To undo, untie. To let the oppressed go free, the bruised, the crushed, the discouraged go free to exempt, set apart, the liberated. Is this the fast that God has chosen? Mm -hmm. That you break every yoke, lift up and off every yoke, that which is upon your neck, so to speak, the weight, and deliver us from oppression. Break every yoke the devil has put upon us. Such is the power of seeking God with all your heart 
even to the degree that we esteem him more than our necessary food, Job says. Have we thought about fasting in the following terms? Is it not to deny your bread to the hungry? Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? Supply your bread to the hungry. That you bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. <laughs> you say, have you ever brought the poor home to your wife for a meal? I don't know, you remember years ago back in Muskegon? This guy in church, or guy uh, come in the store, him and I would talk occasionally, and I knew he was not on the upper scale at all. And one day I felt inclined to invite him to the house for dinner. I thought, how is Ruth going to handle this? They came, they had dinner. They left. What we have, I think it's a part of a lifestyle to share. You say, bring them to the house? I, I do that if the Spirit of God tells me to do that. What was the outcome? I don't know. How was it with you? I done what he asked. He can do what I give him room to do or provide an opportunity for him to minister. Wow. And when you see us the naked, thou covers him and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. Now there's an interesting term. Don't hide yourself from your own flesh, your own family. Wow. This verse simply stated that you can fast from ourselves or deny ourselves and instead of blessing us, bless others the way we normally bless ourselves. We can give the food that we would have eaten to others. We can house and clothe the poor. And we can give of our time and effort to others, especially of our own family, instead of our own projects. Now hang on. Your time, this was not in your notes, it just came now. Your time your time also be invested in others. You say it may not fit my schedule. If you can change your schedule, I'd change it. It's just not our convenience Was it always convenient for Jesus to minister? Get tired. Did he? I think so. But understand, it's just not a one-sided thing. There's another side to this that we need to be clear in our thinking. There is rewards to this type of life. Call it what you will. Call it a fasted life. Call it a surrendered life. Call it uh, uh, 
a life of service. Call it what you will. But doing it, the rewards are listed in verses 8 through 12, beginning with verse 8. And hang on, because they are illuminating. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Whose light is in us? Jesus. Your light will break forth as the morning. Thine help shall spring forth speedily. This morning, as I was reading the notes, help, I just toggled over on it to see what the Hebrew was of that. And you realize it's wholeness? And thy wholeness shall spring forth speedily or promptly. And thy righteousness shall go before you. Today, who is your righteousness? It's God's standard of righteousness. It's his. And it shall go before you. Can you imagine out front of you goes the righteousness of God? Today, Jesus is our righteousness, so Jesus will go before us, preparing the way. And the glory of the Lord shall be your re-reward or rear guard. Do you realize who's standing behind you or what is standing behind you? Then shall you call. Hang on. Then shall you call and the Lord shall answer. Is that a promise? Absolutely. Thou shall cry and he shall say, here I am. <laughs> Don't you like that? You cry, here I am. Amen, he's right there. Here I am. I'm right here. Hmm. Then, then thou shalt call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and, the, and he shall say, here I am. If you take away, uh-oh, if you take away from the midst of the, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. Now to update these Old Testament scriptures, the reality of what Jesus has done for us now, therefore our fasting doesn't make God more prone to hear our prayers and answer them, but our fasting makes us more prone to hear God and be able to receive from him. There's a difference between the old covenant way of receiving God from God and the new covenant way of grace through faith. This is not based on works, folks. Not based on works. You say, well, how do I fast? It costs me something, does it? Sounds to me like you're going to get a fantastic return. Is that your motive? Is it just, I want to draw closer? When I call, I want him to hear. I want him to respond and say, here I am. Here I am. I'm right here. I'm right here. Isn't that neat? That is neat. Is that for a select few? No. That is a promise. A promise. If you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity and darkness be as a noonday. Promotion is coming. Promotion is coming. Proverbs says this. Uh, it's in your notes of reference, but... He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Who will pay? The Lord will pay. Matthew 25, 40, who was given to the poor and fed the hungry and clothed the naked, 
you do that, you've done it unto me, Jesus said. Darkness is used to signify trouble or evil. When we put others ahead of ourselves, then our worst darkness will be comparable to noonday brightness. This is the promise of blessing. The results of a proper fast continue, or a fast that God has chosen. The Lord shall guide thee continually. Picture the shepherd with his sheep. He'll guide you continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought when wisdom is scarce and Jesus supplies himself as wisdom. And make fat thy bones, a state of health and strength. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, a place of flourishing beauty, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. You're fed from a spring of blessing that will never fail. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit. And they that be of you shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundation of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. For those who executed a God-chosen fast, the previous promises of blessing, didn't just benefit them only. The verses go on and said that they that be of you, your children, grandchildren, would also be blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Meantime, when you fast, Matthew says, 6, 16 through 18, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces and they appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The caution here is, watch your motive, because you're faced with a couple choices of what will happen. You do it outward, you have the reward of men. You do it to him, you have the full reward of God, your Father. Now, I find it very interesting. Uh, years ago, I don't know, it keeps this come back to me. I don't know where it was at, some church. And normally on Sunday noon, you had a family dinner type thing. And good, good groceries, all right? Except I wasn't eating that day. And it was noticed because when your speaker isn't eating, what's the deal? And uh, you want something to eat? No, thank you. Take a cup of coffee, probably. <laughs> After they were done, or in the process of eating, the youth ate and bolted for a field, and they was batting a ball around out there, and I wanted to go participate. I must have been ready for night at that point or something, because uh, I went out there, and there was a lady that got somewhat consternated, over a state of consternation over the fact that I wasn't eating, probably fasting, and going to play ball. Did you change? No, I went and played ball. This is not, I'm not fasting for her attention. I'm, I'm focused on what my Lord wants. So what'd you do? Went and played ball. You stayed up, stayed there until I didn't stay there. It, there's a lot of things that people focus on. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you this too. My mother, of course, being the wayward Boynans, everybody else in the family is children of God all except the wayward Winans. Why do you chuckle? (laughs) 
Okay. Unbeknownst to me, mom felt inclined to fast. Okay. Matter of fact, in this case, uh, somebody else was too. I don't know. I don't know if they knew it together or separately. Uh, and the, but I do remember this comment coming back because the other lady come to my mother and said, he's going to be saved. I don't know what the dis time frame was, shortly at least. And then where did she get that? From ongoing communication with the one she was communicating with. Okay? Now, when do I, when do you do this? So on it goes. It, if, you're, if you're practicing this, it may not always be. Uh, You've got to have a, a good wife and a good husband that is some degree flexible. I charged home from work <laughs> going, I, I think this is the night, I'm trying to get the sequence of events straight. I charged home from work. There was what they called a district or quarterly meeting. We lived in Muskegon in Grand Rapids at the big church in Grand Rapids. So people were coming in from all over. They had an evangelist. <laughs> and his name represented a fixed fixture. And he was a sturdy fellow. But anyhow, uh, Ruth fixed me a sandwich. I said, sandwich, when he said, don't eat that. I don't know if you'd ask, but I said, what about, don't eat that. I pushed the sandwich away and said, Ruth looked at me and said, I'm not going to eat it. What'd you do? We got in the car, drove to Grand Rapids, walked into this big church, sat down halfway back on the right-hand side, if I remember right, and mind our own business halfway in the row. When the guy that was the youth director got up and said, did I see Lynn Winans walk in here? I said, whoa. There's, I found out later there's 425 people here. I'm a rookie. Okay? I had, this was within months of being, coming something other than wayward Winans. What did you do? Lynn, would you come up here? Wait a minute. So, where did you go? I walked to the front. He says, after this next song, will you lead us in prayer, please? Wait a minute. The reason I remember the guy's name, I think it was like something like Stonehouse, you know, real. He was kind and generous to me as they sung that hymn. He held out his corner of the book, my corner of the book. Did you have it? His end was steady. Mine was mm, vibrating. <laughs> you say, weren't you trusting? Hello? It wasn't common to my situation that I would be in front of over 400 people. when he reminded me and spoke to me. When you speak, I'm here. Or when you call, I'll say, here I am. I listened in Muskegon, and he manifested himself in Grand Rapids. Because when I stepped to that pulpit to pray, absolute tranquility. <laughs> Not about experience. Well, <laughs> I, I could I could still register that that book was shaken on my side up to the up to the point. So, 
But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy face, be appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay? Were you rewarded, Lynn? I think so. I wrote a rather lengthy Ivor Powell commentary. His commentary is just words. He doesn't take and select out words as such. And in his writing of this, uh, thy father shall reward thee openly. I'm going to read it to you. The father's commendation indicates that we are pleasing in his sight. He's recognized the value of your labor, the rewarding of our actions, not only indicates successful service, but a promise also that no good thing will he withhold from them but walk uprightly. To know these facts is to experience the degree of happiness unobtainable elsewhere. Jesus said, my joy I give you that your joy be full. This is the experience of working together with God. He is not only pleased with our efforts, he also finds pleasure in participating in our endeavors or his endeavor. He will give rewards unobtainable elsewhere. This is the visible evidence that God is on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? Here is confidence, peace, and overflowing joy. When God is first, that is, when God is the head of the firm, he becomes responsible for every detail of business transacted in his name. He becomes the guarantee that my health, future, and well-being will never be overlooked. The workman could never have a better boss. The servant could never have a more kindly master. A trusting child could never have a more reliable father. Jesus was merely trying to inform his followers that God pays excellent wages to his workmen. I want to move on into Matthew now. And we are about to face a distressed father, the helpless disciples, the victorious Jesus, and his defining comments regarding unbelief. In Matthew 17, beginning at verse 14, we read the distressed father's words to Jesus. And when they, came, when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic moonstruck, epileptic, with seizures, sore vex, wickedly, evilly suffering. For oft times he falls into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Now Jesus' defining comments begin. <laughs> and they are defined. Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, Faithless, unbelieving, perverse, distorted, and corrupt. Clearly shows the Lord expected his disciples to be able to cast this demon out of this boy. He'd already given them power against all unclean spirits to cast them out. In Matthew 10, 1, he said this to these disciples. When he called to 12, he gave them power or authority and jurisdiction against unclean spirits to cast them out and heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Mark 16, 17, in my name cast out devils. Do we get the directive here? He'd already told them that. They had experienced this. In Luke 9, 1, he gave them power and authority and jurisdiction over all devils. Mm -mm -mm. They had the power and authority to use that power. They just didn't believe in the, for some reason, or they didn't, they weren't convinced in this case, in the face, perhaps the face of Satan's oppression. I don't know what the disciples saw. I want to go on public record. I don't know. It doesn't tell me what they saw. I can go by the Father's words to Jesus of some of the happenings there. So did the disciples see the child foam at the mouth, gash with his teeth, have a seizure, fall into the fire? We don't know. But something had a negative influence. Jesus continues 
Let me back up to the start of 17 now. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless, perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you or bear with you or endure you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked, commanded the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Okay? In verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus made a very defining comment. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the 12. He's talking to the 12 that had seen this happen. In, they, remember in Luke, uh, about chapter 10, I think, they come back to him and said, even the devils are subject to us in your name. And he says, don't rejoice in that, but rejoice in the fact that your name is written in the book of life. See, it should just be a factor. It just should happen. He expected it to happen because of your unbelief, disbelief, shown in withholding belief in the divine power or in the power and promises of God. Disbelief in the divine mission of Jesus and his assignment to the twelve also to the 70. Also now in verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you had a faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd say to this mountain, remove to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goes out, but by prayer and fasting. What did he tell them back up in 17, or back up in 9 1 of Luke, he gave them power over all devils. He, in Mark 16, he, in my name, do this. And in Matthew 10, uh, Luke 10, where they rejoiced because they, they could cast them out. So, what is he talking about here? No, there are no demons that don't respond to the name of Jesus and faith in his name, not even Satan himself. What does James say? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, the standard was already set. So, he's speaking here, he says, because of your unbelief. Unbelief of what? Ignorance, wrong information, natural unbelief, believing what your five physical senses tell you, believing what your intellect, will, and emotion shares. You're going, you'll be faced with, this, with these questions. When they stand in front of you, and give you the words of the scripture that this lady has been diagnosed, she's going to be double in two years. She cannot carry her toddlers now. And remember the lady that was bound low these many years? The spirit of infirmity? So this man said to me, how would you pray for her? Hello. So how are we going to pray for her? How? Are you ready to pray? Well, that's what the book says. That's how we'll pray. That's what Jesus said. That's how we'll pray. What happened? I didn't see anything. 
I didn't even feel anything particularly. What happened? After a while, they left. The word come back. She was carrying wood into the furnace or fire the next day. She remember, she couldn't carry toddlers. But this is an instantaneous happening. When they leave, they're restored. She was restored. She's no longer bent double. Nor would she be bent double. I've seen her some 30 years later, and she was not bent double. Wow. Before we leave this topic today of, of fasting and, and the supremacy of the Spirit achieving the ascendancy to where it sets us, has dominion over this body and this thing up here that's not renewed yet in its entirety. I want to pause at one other story. And before, and it's this. Mark records a statement of, the, of a distressed father as he speaks to Jesus that needs our attention. In Mark 9, 23 through 25, and Jesus said unto him, to the, the father, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Straight way, he didn't wait. The father's child cried out with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. So it's on board at the same time. And Jesus responded to the Father's words as the crowd gathered, and he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him and enter no more into him. He responded to the Father, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. That was enough. And Jesus acted. You see, he's not a taskmaster recognize and speak to him and come away with more awareness of who and what he is, more communication, more divine direction, more of his standard in our life, more of his action through us, more of his living through us. For the topic today of God's chosen fast, fasting has value and a place in the life, I believe, of all believers. A place. I'm not telling you what priorities to put on that. That's between you and him. I got people that's tried to tell me. I walked into a strange church one day, a strange out-of-state church. I wasn't there only to visit a guy. And the associate pastor took one look at me and said, oh, you need to fast. What'd you do, Lynn? I ignored him. I ignored the person. Listen, we, none of us, make a good Holy Ghost. Okay? We need to hear the divine voice. Hearing the divine voice will change how we, how we live, how we act, what we say, what we do. You cry and you say, here I am. Here I am. Father, that we would know more of here I am. Here I am. When we speak to you. Direct each and every one of our footsteps this day. At this place. In this time. That we become channels for the divine flow of the Spirit of God where our ears are open, our eyes see and our heart receives more of you and the fullness of yourself. So be it, Father. That's your intention, that we be filled with all the fullness of God. Growth. 
We should be moving on and moving upward. Growth. We give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory for this time, this day, in your word. In Jesus' name, we thank you for producing the result. Amen.